Thank you for joining us on today's episode of Tax Matters. I'm Chamaka Ohawichi. We begin with a public notice from the Office of the Executive Chairman FRS, which is in regards to the filing of tax returns at the tax office closest to taxpayers' operational bases, in line with Federal Inner Revenue Service segmentation policy. And it goes thus. The Federal Inland Revenue Service wishes to call the attention of the general public and in particular its esteemed taxpayers to its subsisting policy on taxpayer segmentation and industry-specific arrangements for carrying out taxing activities, including filing of tax returns. By this notice, the FRS further retreats and directs the taxpayers to file their tax returns at the tax office nearest to their business locations or operational business in line with its taxpayer segmentation policy, which comprises large, medium, micro and small and other specified tax offices. NGOs are to file at the Tax Incentive Management Office in Abuja, Lagos and Protocourt, as well as at designated MSTOs in the various state capitals. Federal and state ministries, departments and agencies, as well as local government councils, are to file at state government business tax offices across the country. All non-resident companies and individuals are to file at the non-resident persons tax office, Lagos Island. The public notice is under the hand of the Executive Chairman FRS, Mr. Muhammad Nami. It is an offence punishable by a fine of 10 million naira and or imprisonment for any agency of the federal government other than FIRS to demand for books or returns for the purposes of tax. It is also an offence to carry out the function of assessment, collection or enforcement of tax or pay any portion of tax revenue to any person or into any account other than the relevant accounts designated by the Constitution or relevant laws of the National Assembly. It pays to pay your tax. This message is brought to you by the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS. Welcome once again and welcome to our Tax Education and Guest Corner Road into One. Our focus of attention today is Capital Gains Tax, CGT for short. Capital gains tax is the levy imposed on the gains arising from the disposal of chargeable assets under the principal legislation, the Capital Gains Tax Act, Cap C1, Elephant 2004, as amended. A disposal of an asset will exist where any capital sum is derived from a sale, lease, transfer, an assignment, a compulsory acquisition, or any other disposition of assets, notwithstanding that no asset is acquired by the person paying the capital sum. To shed light on capital gains tax, we have with us the Fiscal Policy Partner and Africa Tax Leader, PwC, Mr. Taiwo Oyedeli. Mr. Oyedeli, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. So we are looking at capital gains tax. Now, what is the law guiding capital gains tax in Nigeria? Yes, so I, let me start by saying actually capital gains tax is collected both by the federal government and the state government. So for the federal government, it will be the Federal Inland Revenue mm -hmm. Service. For the state, it will be the Internal Revenue Service of the various um, governments at the state level. So the law that um, created capital gains tax is actually a very old law. So it was enacted in 1967. Uh, just imagine, anybody that was born in 1967 has just about three, four years to retirement now. So that's a long time ago. Um, it's it's a, a law called the Capital Gains Tax Act, CAP C1 LFN uh, 2004. LFN means Laws of the Federation of Nigeria. Um, it was compiled in 2004, that's why we say 2004, even though it wasn't enacted in 2004. 
Between then and now, there have been series of amendments, uh, including the more recent one around taxation of capital gains on shares in the capital market. So you can then say that the law that guides capital gains tax is the Capital Gains Tax Act, Cap C1, LFN 2004, as amended. What is the rate of this capital gains tax? Is it a single rate? Yes, it's a single rate of 10%. It doesn't matter which asset it is. It doesn't matter whether it's federal or state, company or individual, it's 10%. So it's either you're paying the 10% or you're exempted from capital gains tax. Across board. Across federal board. State. Federal, no level. If you're poor, if you're rich, everybody pays 10%, which is an important point, actually, because generally in the principle of um, tax mm. policies, if you have a flat rate of tax, we consider it as regressive because... Just imagine a billionaire, and I'm sure there are some names will come to your mind now. You know, when a billionaire sells something and they make, you know, two billion naira gain, and he has them to pay 10%, they pay 10%, they still have 1.8 billion left. You know me, maybe my own gain is <laughs> 2,500. <laughs> you know, so I should bring 10%. That 10% is more painful, because even the entire 2.5 is not enough to cover my basic needs. So that's why you expect uh, the tax system to be progressive, but for some reasons, including us not relooking at our tax system from time to time, it has remained at the 10% for a long time. So would you suggest there should be a review, a change in this rate among individuals? Yeah, indeed. You know, even in the national tax policy, we had mentioned it there, it was still because I, I had the opportunity to be one of the members of the committee that drafted the national tax policy. Some of the things we said with capital gains as is one, you need to review it to ensure that there's a threshold to protect the poorest people. If you sell your asset and the amount you make is very small, let them just live their life in peace. Number two is increase the rate because the rate needs to be very close to company's income tax rate and personal income tax rate. In fact, in many countries, they just have an income tax act. They don't split it. We've broken our tax law into like our income tax law is like four. You have companies' income tax, petroleum profit tax act, which is now under the PIA. You have the capital gains tax, and then you have the um, personal income tax act. So all those acts are income tax act. They could have been one law. So you allow the rate to be very similar to prevent arbitrage. Arbitrage means I could artificially make my transaction look like it's capital. So I can pay 10% instead of allowing it to just flow naturally and I'll pay 30% on that CIT. Uh, so those reforms are among many, including adjusting for inflation. Uh, there's a lot that we need to do. I think the, the analogy I gave uh, about if you had a car that was produced in 1967 and you keep, you know, patching it, repairing it, I'm sure even by now, you know there are some cars like that. The door is Honda, the bonnet is Toyota, the engine is Nissan. So <laughs> but it looks like it's a B2 car. So just buy a new one. It, we also said in that national tax policy, and it's still there now for everybody to look at, that even the company's income tax rate needs to come down. You know, if you ask me, I think the company's income tax rate needs to come down to about 20%, right? So personal income tax rate is already around 20%, right? Except that you need to provide more exemption to the poorest people. Mm -hmm. And then take capital gains tax up to 20%, if and only you are going to protect the poorest people. And there's a way to calculate poverty line, right? And also to make adjustment for inflation so that you're not taxing me on paper gain. Uh, so if you do all of that, then it will curb all this thing you know, of, you know, people pretending that they have capital against us instead of CIT. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Now, in reading through the various literatures on the matter, we found something that goes thus. This, however, does not apply to replacement of business assets. What does this mean? Yes. So... Imagine that you have a business, and it could be any business. Uh, maybe in your business, you need to use a vehicle, a car for that business. For some people, it's building, it could be a factory, plant, equipment, furniture, it could be anything. If that asset falls in the category of assets that are liable to capital gains tax, just imagine what can play out. Ten years ago, you bought a car, and you bought it for 
You know, before Naira started messing up against dollars, we were buying new cars for even 4 million, 5 million, right? So let's say you bought the car for 5 million Naira. You sit for 10 years, now it's creating more problems for you than solutions. You say, okay, let me sell it and buy a new one. And you may easily sell it for more than 5 million now. So maybe you're selling it for 7 million. But you need to buy the replacement one for 10 million. Government says, actually, when you bought it, you bought for only 5 million and you sold for 7. Can you give me the capital gains tax? Even this 7 million is not enough. I still have to find additional money to buy a new one so I can continue my business. Mm -hmm. Government doesn't want that problem to arise. So they said, if you sell an asset and there's capital gains, but it's, it's your business asset and you use the money to replace the asset you are selling, will let you be in peace. Uh, we also call it rollover relief, uh, but there's no need going into technical terminologies. So that's what it means, and it makes a lot of sense. So it's one of the good things in the CGT Act. Yes. Fair enough. Now, how do you factor in cost of depreciation, cost of maintenance, repairs, and the difference between the cost of purchase ab initio and the cost of the product at the point of disposal in calculating capital gains tax? Let's stay with that example of the car. So when you were buying the car, and you could have just even, you can even buy a car abroad and import it directly to Nigeria. So you pay clearing, you pay the agent, you pay duties. If you decide to buy in Nigeria, you go and buy from a dealer, you do registration. Sometimes you need to get a mechanic to help you see that if it's not a brand new one, just so they can go and sell you, you know, a, a jalopy like that. Um, sometimes you want to repaint. Now, all the, the cost of buying the assets, and everything, we call it incidental to the purchase, including if you bought it in Kano and you're bringing it to Lagos. The cost of transporting it from Kano to Lagos is part of the cost of buying the asset. All of those costs will be recognized as the cost of acquisition. Now, when you start using the asset, there's maintenance costs, which is different from improvement costs. So if you service the car, you buy fuel, you can't tell government that you want to claim that. That's maintenance. It is not recognized for capital gains as purposes. But if that vehicle, assuming is allowed, um, can take four passengers, and you say, can you extend it so that I can take two more passengers? <laughs> <laughs> the cost of extending it to take two more passengers will be recognized as enhancement because it means it can do more, it can carry more loads, more people. So the cost of enhancement is recognized. And when you now want to sell it, the cost of selling it, you may look for an agent to help you, you may advertise, and all of those. So you now determine, I'm selling it for a certain amount, let's say 10 million. I bought it for 5 million. Enhancement is 2 million. You know, so you can take up the cost of buying it, the cost of enhancement from the selling proceed. Right? And then the difference is your capital gains on which you pay 10% tax as capital gains tax. Listening to Mr. Oyedele, one becomes more convinced than ever that record keeping is key in business in general, but more importantly, in taxation in particular. If you are going to claim the reliefs allowable under capital gains tax, then you must keep records of all expenses, cost of original purchase, cost of repairs or maintenance, etc., etc. This feature continues in a subsequent episode. We have also spoken to Mr. Matthew Bojumbola, Group Lead Special Tax Operations Group at the FRS on the same subject, all in our bid to arm our viewers with information and education required to play their role as good corporate and individual citizens. <music> have a, a document known as the Modernization Plan that uh, documents how FRS intends to improve its services to end users and this is a holistic plan. We are looking at the human resources, looking at the processes, we are also looking at the deployment of technology. So we are looking at deploying all the latest technological tools that will enable us to do much better, to perform better. And you can see that this is already yielding results. So this has been going on over the years, but with 
from the advent of uh, this new uh, this, uh, this management, there has been a renewed effort towards making sure that all our processes are automated. And the vanguard of that automation process is our tax promax, which is our external application that the taxpayers use to file their returns, to request for their tax clearance certificates, to print out their receipts and withholding credit notes. So what it means now is that taxpayers can carry out all their tax affairs at the comfort of their homes without coming to FIRS. So that has improved the ease of doing business, the ease of compliance. And this is also showing up in our collections. I'm a very busy man. My business involves a lot of traveling and I interface with lots and lots of people and organizations. Tax compliance used to be a big drag on my business. It was time consuming and very costly. But now, no more. Introducing the FIRS Tax Pro Max, the truly fully end-to-end -end tax administration solution for companies' income tax, value-added tax, petroleum profits tax, and all other tax types. For fast, efficient, and convenient end-to-end -end tax experience, log on to www.taxpromax.firs.gov.ng. Tax Pro Max has turned things around for me. It is fast, user-friendly, and cost-effective. My team and I would do everything possible to continue to promote the message of taxation in Nigeria and beyond. We want to conclude this episode with a story on the Umbrella Association of Chartered Tax Practitioners in Nigeria, the CITN. The Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, CITN, is the umbrella body of registered tax practitioners in Nigeria, having been chartered by the Federal Government of Nigeria by the Enabling Act No. 76 of 1992. Now CITN Act Cap C10, Volume 2, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004. To take the activities down to its members spread across the length and breadth of Nigeria, the CITN is organized along district societies. As at the last count, the institute had 44 district societies. On Wednesday, the 1st of March 2023, the Kubwa and District Society was inaugurated, making it the 45th district society of the CITN. It was a well-attended event, attracting the creme de la creme of the taxation profession, including the executive chairman FRS, represented by the coordinating director executive chairman's group, Mr. M. L. Abubakar, the president of the CITN, past president of the CITN, former executive chairman FRS, and former accountant general of the federation, Dr. J. K. Naiju. Dr. Wisdom Oshadari is the chairman of Investiture Committee. The decision to have a second district in Abuja and its environs, where our esteemed members will be given an alternative platform where they can contribute their quota actively to our noble institute started about two years ago. Though not without some hitches, but with shared determination, commitment, and perseverance. The Institute graciously gave an approval, hence the inauguration we are having today. Before the creation of the Kubwa and District Society, the FCT had the Abuja and District Society. Dr. Kennedy Iwundu is the chairman of Abuja and District Society. The birth of Kubwa District is in line with the CITN vision to ensure that her activities are spread across the country. As the mother district, we always support the birth of new districts. Right now, we are also working to see that we have Gwagwalada district. Because of proximity, most of our members living in Gwagwalada are not able to enjoy the activities of CITN here in Abuja. Abuja is made up of six area councils. The Abuja Municipal Area Council, the Gwagwalada Area Council, the Buari Area Council, the Kujay Area Council, the Abaji Area Council. We want to see our district in all these area councils. 
In his own address, President of the CITN, Mr. Adeshino Adedayo, gave this charge. The whole essence of having a district society is to close the gap between the national body and what is happening at the level of district society. The welfare of members is critical. Capacity building is equally very critical. So as much as possible, we want district society not to be far from their members. Please, as much as possible. We don't want a situation where members will say, I don't know how to get in touch with them at the national level. That shouldn't happen when you have a district society. We don't want to be hearing it, either privately or publicly, that there is something that is happening in the economic and fiscal policy terrain that our members are ignorant of. At the national level, we have resolved that the growth of CITN can only be determined by what is happening at the district society level. At the district society level, we can only grow if we are able to also engage ourselves effectively. Information from the district we transmit to the national level, and from there we can talk about policy direction in order to strengthen the institute. And then the reason for the gathering, the inauguration of the brand new district of the CITN, the Kubwar and District Society. In accordance with the Institute's Charter, CITN Act, Cap C 10, Volume 2, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, I hereby propose that you inaugurate Kubwa and District Society. I have the pleasure and honor with my elders with me here to present this to you. To mark the occasion, a paper was presented on the role of tax practitioners by Mr. Femi Olarinde of the FIRS. In his acceptance speech, the pioneer chairman of Kubwa and DC Society, Mr. Chimenka Ezeribe, made a pledge. My team and I would do everything possible to continue to promote the message of taxation in Nigeria and beyond. The executive members of Kubo and District Society thereafter took the oath of office. I will devote myself, I will devote myself to the service and well-being well of the members of the Institute. So help me God. Awards were presented to the executive chairman FRS and deserving members of the tax profession who have contributed in one way or the other to the birth of the Kubwa and District Society. We congratulate the new baby, the Kubwa and District Society of the CITN, as we leave you with these parting shorts. I want to sincerely first congratulate the mother district of this new baby for um, supporting this cause and want to also congratulate the new district and bear in mind that in Lagos we have more than one district and they have been existing and coexisting peacefully. I encourage the mother district and this new district to also coexist peacefully and also to give back to other districts in the near future. With this, at the end of the day, is the institute, the profession we are that will be the beneficiary. This district shall think outside the bus and widen the horizon with innovative ideas that will enhance the transition profession in Nigeria and by extension, fulfilling the lofty goals and vision of our great institute. It is on that note that we anchor today's episode of Tax Matters. It has been our pleasure and we do hope that you have enjoyed every bit of it. Let's do this again next week, same station, same day of the week and same time of the day. Remember, if you have any question, observation or comment on this episode or past episodes of Tax Matters, reach out to us on Twitter on Facebook, on YouTube, by test or by calling. 
you can also reach out directly to the FRS through the contact center. Thank you for watching.